Very, he's so generous. Because Being a superstar has its perks. According to The Hollywood Reporter, Tom Cruise was talking in February with Warner Brothers Discovery CEO David Zaslav, who told him Warner's upcoming movie The Flash was great. Cruz asked if he could see it, so a Warner's employee took a copy to Cruz's home, then took it back after the actor finished watching it. Cruz reportedly was so impressed, he called director Andy Muschietti to rave about the film. The Flash hits theaters June 16th. You should probably run. Megan director Gerald Johnstone says the difference between the PG-13 theatrical version and the unrated cut was less swearing, not less gore. On the horror side of things, you know, we, we just didn't hold back and you'll you'll just get to see people's faces get ripped off. And, you know, if that's if that's your cup of tea, uh, it's it's there with shortbread waiting for you. Megan Unrated is on digital now and arrives on Blu-ray and DVD Tuesday in Hollywood. I'm David Daniel. Financial regulators are stepping in to strengthen the world's banking system. I'm ABC's Justin Finch with the new deals now brokered abroad and at home. And let's look out there with live cam as spring break wraps up for a lot of people out there. Uh, it doesn't feel like spring right now. You need to grab that jacket. We're starting off cold at 46 degrees and we're going to check in with Mike to see what we can expect later this afternoon. Live from case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. And good morning to you, Rise and Shine, South Texas. It's been a fairly mild winter, yeah. and spring begins later today. It is Monday, March 20th. Thanks for joining us. Hope you had a good weekend. And I think because we had a mild winter, it kind of came back, you know, during the month of March, like, hello, don't forget about me. <laughs> and it's happened in the past, too. Yeah. I remember some spring breaks where you're sitting at the beach, kind of going, what? Oh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> anyway, it will warm up. This week's going to be kind of the opposite of what last week was. Last week, we started very warm, got colder. We start colder, going to get warmer as the week rolls on. And we do actually have some rain chances uh, later on in the week. Better rain chances. A couple of little sprinkles out there as of right now. This is what's showing up on radar. Some very light rain out there in parts of the hill country. Some of this may be evaporating before it reaches the ground because we still have pretty dry air down here at the surface. But there will be a couple of uh, sprinkles around. 47 degrees now here in town. 43 Balverde and 44 in Comfort. 39 Lost Maples. And then notice how these dew point temperatures are a good 10 almost in some cases 15 degrees lower than the air temperature so that very dry layer down here at the surface which again is why some of the uh, those sprinkles may evaporate before they reach the ground doesn't mean we're not going to see any and not much of a breeze right now although it will get windier as the day rolls on temperatures may be hard pressed to get down to 41 degrees I was thinking we were going to do that earlier but we're not going to see a huge warm up throughout the day we'll make it into the low 50s today at noon and then top off at 57 Seven. 59 yesterday, but of course we had all that sunshine today. 57 with all those clouds out there and it is going to get breezier, so it'll feel a whole heck of a lot cooler. Jacket's a good idea all day long. By the way, spring officially begins at 424 later on this afternoon and nope, not going to feel like it. It will feel like it eventually, though, as the week rolls on. All those details and some better rain chances later on. That's coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen, what's cooking on the road? Yeah, nothing good here, Mike. Unfortunately, this is where I've kept my close eye on for the last uh, 30 minutes or so. I-10 West uh, at Avenue, you can see there that we have flashing lights that have been lingering around for a little bit too long now. First responders have been on the scene investigating a crash that was reported a little bit earlier this morning, and you can see now traffic is just down to one lane and this is happening at a time where a lot of folks are returning back to work and a lot more people will be out on the roadways around this hour. So this is going to impact your commute guys. Let's get a look there along I 10 eastbound at Hildeburn Avenue where that crash is reported. Now the reason why it's a little bit concerning is because a lot of folks tend to make their way down I 10 to get to the day get the day started here in the downtown area and you see a little bit more of that build up stretching back to Vance Jackson Road about one mile there. So if you have plans to travel into the downtown area, we'll start looking for different solutions for you, but I would advise you to make sure to prepare to slow down for those flashing lights because first responders will be out there for a little while longer. Giving you a wide look at the metropolitan area, so some relief for other drivers here. You can see plenty of green out there, nothing really too concerning at this hour, but let's take a look at those travel times because if you do plan to travel into uh, the downtown area from Bernie along I-10 eastbound, it's going to take you about 32 minutes at this hour, and I think it's because that crash is impacting some of the traffic heading into the downtown area. 
On 281 southbound, it's not too bad, though. Uh, from Bulverde, we can expect about a 26-minute drive time. And even for our friends up in New Braunfels along 35 southbound, you can really expect about 25-minute commute uh, to get to the downtown area. But right now, it does look like this is going to impact drivers who are heading along I-10 East. Again, remember, we, traffic is just moving uh, along really slow at just one lane there. First responders have been out there for a little while, so let's give them plenty of room. We'll keep a close eye on it and hope for that better update in the next few minutes. Guys. Stephen, thank you. Happening today, the Bear County Sheriff's Office is increasing deputy presence at Brennan and Southwest High Schools due to recent drug and gun related incidents. BCSO said in a Facebook post starting today, parents can expect to see members of the school safety task force for the rest of the school year. The task force is made up of support personnel and deputies from BCSO's gang, mental health, traffic, patrol and organized crime units. A public safety forum will be held from 6 to 8 p.m. this Thursday, that's March 23rd, at Benny L. Cole Elementary in Northside ISD. Anyone with information about criminal activity can also anonymously send tips to schooltips at bear.org. And now to the courts and a woman charged in connection with the death of her son, baby James. The attorney for Delaney Chariz is hoping to have her bond reduced. Today, a judge could rule on the motion. Now, Delaney was arrested and charged with tampering with evidence and injury to a child following the discovery of baby James in the West Side trailer where they both lived. Now, last year, Delaney was sentenced to five years in prison on the tampering with evidence charge. She is waiting for her day in court on the injury to a child charge. And now to the latest efforts to stem a multinational banking crisis. Swiss investment bank UBS is poised to purchase a struggling rival. That news coming as the U.S. and the world's central banks come together to inject more U.S. dollars into the global banking system for borrowing. And as ABC's Justin Finch reports, financial regulators take action to shore up some troubled U.S. regional banks. A buyer is stepping up to acquire Signature Bank, one of two failed regional banks the FDIC recently took over. New York Community Bank agreeing to purchase Signature for more than $2 billion. Now Silicon Valley Bank awaits a new buyer, as ABC News confirms the Federal Reserve was aware of years worth of risks at SVB. In 2021, the Fed cited key risks to the bank, including how it handled liquidity. And last July, the Fed rated the bank deficient for governance and controls. The Fed now conducting an internal review. These big multi-billion dollar banks loaded up on risk. So they gave themselves huge bonuses and big salaries, and they exploded their banks. Across the U.S., a new report finds at least 186 banks could be at risk for failing if half of account holders quickly withdrew their funds. Those findings come as First Republic Bank sees its credit rating downgraded again, despite 11 large U.S. banks offering a $30 billion lifeline. From the U.S. to Switzerland, regulators taking extraordinary swift measures to boost the world's banking system. UBS intends to downsize Credit Suisse's investment banking business and align its for UBS to buy and battle rival Credit Suisse for $3 billion. And here in the U.S., Fed Chair Jerome Powell and Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen are calling the UBS Credit Suisse deal a solution for financial stability and to protect the global economy. Justin Finch, ABC News, Washington. Top of your morning headlines, the last minute witnesses scheduled to testify today before a grand jury investigating former President Donald Trump comes after Trump's claim that this weekend that his arrest is imminent. This morning, House Speaker Kevin McCarthy is urging calm, saying people should not protest if the former president is indicted. Trump has claimed he'll be arrested tomorrow into alleged hush money paid to adult film actress Stormy Daniels before the 2016 election. He acknowledges paying Daniels, but says he did nothing wrong. And President Biden spoke with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu to voice concern over the planned overhaul of the country's judicial system. The two leaders spoke by phone yesterday. The president also offered support for efforts to come to a compromise. That conversation comes as hundreds of thousands of Israelis have taken to the streets across Israel to protest the plan. 
Happening right now, the leader of China has touched down in Russia to meet with Russian President Vladimir Putin. This will be the first time in Moscow they've met since Russia invaded Ukraine. The trip likely to be viewed by the West as a powerful show of support for Russia. The Kremlin says they plan to strengthen relations and discuss the war in Ukraine. The U.S. plans to keep a very close eye on any developments in Moscow over the next couple of days. And a little closer to home, the Somerset community is mourning the loss of one of their teachers who recently died, seventh grade English teacher Suzanne Martinez. Now, she died after a two-year-long battle with colon cancer. Now, this is according to school officials in a social media post. Martinez might look familiar to you because she was featured on our Educator of the Month series back in January. Now, she had been a teacher at Brooks Collegiate Academy since 2018, and those who knew her described her as someone who always had a smile to share, a hug to give or an ear to listen and uh, she was a beautiful person. I had the honor of getting to meet her and talk to her a few times and to interview her and to be there on, on her special day and you know our deepest condolences go out to her family, her husband Joseph and her three children and of course all of her family there at Brooks Collegiate. Yeah, you just met her back in in January. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I know. It just uh, she she really you know she really touched my heart and she also talked about that she wanted to really help her you know her children her students you know she said I want to teach as long as I can yeah she was truly an angel among us and now she's home 610 right now 46 degrees and he took down the shooter saving countless lives after the break the man being honored for the life-saving military hero of the year award and outside with live cam so yeah we've already talked about this spring begins later today but the question is who will win the battle today the clouds or the sun we'll talk to Mike coming up a little later in the newscast And welcome back. It is 614. Now recognition and appreciation for a true American hero. Yeah, that's right. Four months after the shooting at Club Q in Colorado Springs, this man, Richard Fierro, received an official thank you. Here's ABC's Rihanna Nally. This morning, a big honor for the man who helped end a deadly mass shooting. It's exciting and it's humbling for me. Richard Fierro received the Life-Saving Military Hero of the Year Award given by the Red Cross to those who respond to an emergency while off-duty. The Army veteran was at Club Q in Colorado Springs in November when a gunman opened fire in the club, killing five people. Everyone in that night was a hero. We're all the same. They're all heroes in there. It was a, it was a nightmare. Authorities say the death toll would have been much higher if Fierro and two others had not tackled the gunman. I grabbed him by the back of his little cheap armor thing and I pulled him down. Then I started wailing on this dude and I'm on top of him. I'm a big dude. The suspect in the shooting was arrested and faces hundreds of charges, including four hate crimes. The boyfriend of Fierro's daughter was one of the people killed. Fierro calls it an honor to be recognized, but he wants lawmakers and the American people to come together to tackle gun violence. I have used a weapon for 15 years in the Army. Doesn't mean that it's a bad thing, but at the end of the day, do I want certain things in the street? That's totally up to the American people to figure out. Fierro's message to the world? Be kind. Just be nice to people, like say hello at Walmart to some stranger, because maybe they're having the worst day of their life and I needed someone to say hello. And that hello stops them from doing something heinous. Rihanna and Ali, ABC News, New York. 616 on your Monday morning. And it's still kind of a mess out there at I-10 at West Avenue. Let's check back with our Stephen Cavazos. Yeah, I know that we have been uh, showing this shot for a little while now, but we really want you to be aware of what's happening out there because traffic has been down to one lane for a little while. This is in the eastbound lanes of I-10. You can see the shot from West Avenue really just picks up the story there because first responders have been out there investigating this crash for quite a while now, and we at least have three lanes that are blocked off. So this is going to impact your commute if you are heading down along I-10 eastbound a little bit later this morning. You can see it right there reflected on our map. Uh, as you approach Hillebrand Avenue, that is where that crash has been reported, and traffic is still backed up about a mile back to Vance Jackson Road. And at this time, this is the only major incident that is being reported at this time. But remember, it's back to work for a lot of folks, and it's obviously back to school for a lot of kiddos. So we know that this is going to impact the drive time. We're going to keep a close eye on it throughout the morning. But let's get one last look there. Um, again, hoping for that better shot where we'll see things clear up. But we're getting closer to morning rush and remember we have people going back to work and we're going to see a lot more school buses out there as well. So we have to make sure that we drive extra 
careful today. Yeah, heed those ski school ski zones. School zones. <laughs> school zones. Not here. <laughs> Not here. <laughs> like a ski to school. <laughs> I saw a picture this weekend of the snow that's so high it's up to the bottom of the chairs. It's ski lifts yes. out in the Sierra Nevadas oh, of California. Yeah. That is insane to me, oh, especially this late in the season. Wow. Yeah, when you think of some of those those chairlift They're towers that are there. Yeah, 30, 40 feet high. So Goodness. Burr. So we're and, lucky over here. And we had some <laughs> yeah. of our snow over the weekend out in the hill country. Yes, nothing like that this morning. So, but grab a jacket because it is still very chilly out there. We're going to be right around the mid 40s, obviously, give or take where you are. A couple of sprinkles are going to be possible. There's a few of them out there in the hill country. We're going to show you that in a second. And then 57 later on this afternoon. Not any huge warm up. Keep a coat handy, kind of like yesterday, except for the fact plenty of clouds and breezy. Mm. So it won't be as nice as uh, yesterday was. Speaking of beautiful, look at this. Somebody was out there walking around, and I had to take a, a second look at this picture to really see what was going on. That tree that uh, oh. fell out oh, there. Wow. Yeah, out there, Saddler and River yeah. Road, and obviously cars couldn't get by, but... Uh, yeah, I'm sure folks are out just taking a nice little walk, and it was a beautiful day for well, it. Well, busy road on the weekends. Yeah. People mm -hmm. out there just to drive, you know, along the Guadalupe River, and that's, that's a heavily trafficked area on the weekend. Ho hopefully got that all uh, cleared out of there. Thank you very much for the KSAC Connect picture. Plenty of clouds hanging around uh, right now, and here's those few little sprinkly showers that I was talking about, and there are some of them maybe a little bit on the, oh, close to moderate side. Most of this is very, very light, and given the fact that we do have still very dry air down here at the surface. There's a fairly big difference between the temperature and the dew point temperature. So some of this may be evaporating before it reaches the ground, but obviously some of it is obviously making it all the way down here. So we will uh, keep that in the forecast, just one or two of those light sprinkles. And there you can see a few of them that the uh, computer models are picking up later on this morning. Now this is not gonna be anything really of, of any consequence at all, just sort of uh, enough to make the roads kind of damp. And that's gonna be the situation overnight into tomorrow morning and then morning commute get kind of a couple of sprinkles here and there uh, one or two of them in the afternoon we will do it all again going into Wednesday morning as well and the reason for this is all the humidity is going to continue to pump back on here so we've got temperatures in the mid 40s right now dew points down in the 30s and then these numbers continue to go up as the winds shift around out of the southeast like I said it is going to be on the breezier side and then Two points by the afternoon tomorrow, mid 60s. So yeah, you're definitely going to feel all the humidity. And then also what that's going to do is not allow temperatures to get as cool the next couple of mornings. So we'll stay mid 50s tomorrow, mid 60s. Then by Wednesday morning with all that humidity around here, cold pretty much all over the country. When you consider what are normal temperatures right now, we should be in the low approaching mid 50s. So we're definitely kind of cool. And that's because this jet stream right here, that's sort of the dividing line between the cold and the warm air that got pushed really, really far south. And that's why we were so chilly over the weekend. But that's going to start to work its way back up to the north. We get this southwesterly flow really pulls in all the the warm air, allows things to warm up all the humidity. Then Thursday into Friday, a little bit of that surface Front works its way on through here. It's not going to be that much colder. Yes, low temperatures will be colder, but just because we get the dry air coming on in, but high temperatures will still be well, actually well above normal by a few degrees going into the weekend. 52 at noon today. Cloudy skies. Again, a couple little sprinkles around this morning. One or two of them possible later on this afternoon. Kind of breezy. Wind out of the southeast at 10 to 20 miles per hour. Then tomorrow, Notice how temperatures don't really move in the overnight hours, and then we get up to 67. Again, a couple of sprinkles. Temperatures don't move all that much into Wednesday morning, then 76 in the afternoon, and we'll make it into the low 80s Thursday. Better chance for some rain as the next front moves through here, and that's going to be Thursday night into Friday. Not colder in behind, but drier. So cool mornings, warm afternoons. Nice looking weekend. More like spring. Mm -hmm, which begins at 424 today. All right. Happy spring. Yes. Later today. Later today. 621, 46 degrees. And just ahead, a state of emergency in Miami Beach after two deadly shootings this weekend. That's next year, GMA First Look. Moderate to severe eczema. It doesn't care if you have a date, a day off, or a double shift. Make your move. 
and get out in front of eczema with steroid-free Sabinko. Not an injection. Sabinko is a once-daily pill for adults who didn't respond to previous treatments. And it's proven to help provide clearer skin and relieve itch fast. Sabinko continuously treats eczema whether you're flaring or not. Sabinko can lower your ability to fight infections, including TB. Before and during treatment, your doctor should check for infections and do blood tests. Tell your doctor if you've had hepatitis B or C, have flu-like symptoms, or are prone to infections. Do not take with medicines that prevent blood clots serious, sometimes fatal infections, lymphoma, lung, skin, and other cancers. Serious heart-related events and blood clots can happen. People 50 and older with heart disease risk factors have an increased risk of serious heart-related events or death with JAK inhibitors. It's time to get out in front of eczema. Ask your doctor about Once Daily Sabinko. In this morning's GMA First Look, Spring Break State of Emergency. Two deadly shootings on back-to-back -back nights over the weekend along Hotspot Ocean Drive, creating chaos, sending visitors scrambling, prompting the city to take action, imposing a new curfew. The volume of people in our city, the unruly nature of too many, and the presence of guns has created a peril that cannot go unchecked, especially in the evening. A large swath of Miami Beach's most popular areas under that emergency curfew from midnight to 6 a.m. There are a lot of policemen on bikes. There are way more security guards. It's definitely more a lockdown than it was yesterday. And we'll have much more on this spring break state of emergency coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Victor Okendo, ABC News, Miami Beach. In today's tech sites, Meta Verified is now up and running. The subscription service allows users to add that blue check mark to their Facebook and Instagram accounts. It costs about 12 bucks per month on the web and about 15 on mobile. There is a verification process to complete and you have to be at least 18 years old. A new TikTok feature allows users to reset their For You feed if they don't find their recommendations relevant. Past interactions will be completely wiped out. Recommended videos going forward will be as though a user just signed up. The feature can be enabled from content preferences. And an update to YouTube Music allows users to automatically download recently played songs on Android. Premium subscribers just need to find the recently played songs toggle under settings, downloads, and storage. It appears to be independent of the smart downloads feature. Those are your Tech Bytes. I'm Rihanna Ali. Have a great day. Outside with live cam, jumping right back into the work week on this Monday morning. Mid 40s out at the airport. Mike says we'll see a warming trend this week. The question is, could we see any spring showers? Welcome back on your 630 Monday, March 20th. Happy Monday. Thanks for joining us. Hope you had a good weekend in. We are, or hope you're handling, you know, back to work and back to reality and school <laughs> in a, you know, in a good way this morning. Well, one thing to help handle it better, make sure you take a jacket. Yes. Uh, that's going to help out getting up this early, but uh, you'll need it when you step outside and pretty much all day long as well. And see, we got plenty of clouds out there right now. That's going to be the difference between yesterday and today. Of course, we started off with some clouds yesterday, but then they cleared out very nicely and we got up into the upper 50s. Now we're going to keep these clouds around and we do have a few of these showers, these spring showers out there right now. And this one batch right here just to the north of Concan, working its way straight to the east and working into uh, Medina County. Actually, um, a couple of moderate showers out there, which is nice, but other than that, most of this is just on the, uh, the light side. And we've got a few more uh, well, extending from Bandera County back in toward U Valley, there's a few again of these light sprinkly showers. Now the air is still fairly dry. We've got temperatures in the 40s right now, but then dew points are still in many cases 10 to almost 15 degrees lower than that. So some of that very light rain may actually be evaporating before it reaches the ground, but there will be one or two sprinkles out there. We don't have much of a breeze right now, but it is going to get breezier later on today. Oak is moderate, mold and mulberry are both on the low side. And then throughout the rest of today, cloudy, chilly, a couple of sprinkles around the area this morning. And then later on, we just keep plenty of clouds around and still stays cool in the upper 50s. Again, it is going to be on the breezy side. Then tomorrow, 
Once again, a few sprinkles around here. The humidity is going to continue to increase over the next couple of days, so some morning sprinkles around, maybe a stray shower here and there. We do get warmer mid 60s, then mid 70s by Thursday or by Wednesday, and then low 80s by Thursday. Thursday is also when we have a chance for a few showers and thunderstorms with the front moving on through here. Not a big shot of cold air at all. As a matter of fact, we're going to be every bit as warm, but we get the drier air coming on in here, so it's going to allow for cool mornings and then warm afternoons. So good looking for weekend of spring officially. The spring officially begins later on this afternoon. More details on that coming up. Traffic Authority. Still got problems out there? We do, Mike. Unfortunately, we are keeping a very close eye on certain areas in town. But before we get to that big problem, let's talk about what you can expect for uh, the roadways right now because 90 at 35, not too bad. You can see really traffic's just getting a little bit busier. Remember, we're going to start to see a lot more folks out on the roadway now that it is back to work and back to school for a lot of people. So remember to drive safe. Now to that big problem that we mentioned uh, right here, I-10 eastbound at Hildebrand. You can see that crash. It has been uh, really causing a big slowdown for drivers. We know right now people are getting by, but just through one lane of traffic and roughly moving about 20 miles per hour. We have to update this uh, stretch of traffic there because earlier it was stretched back about a mile to Vance Jackson. Now it looks like we're going a little bit further, a little bit uh, right near crossroads. So we'll get a closer look. I believe our friends at Transguide are working to get us different shots as well. So we'll be updating you on that throughout the morning. Let's give you a wide look at the metropolitan area, and it's the same story as what we saw on the Transguide cameras. Just getting a little bit busier out there, but we're going to start to see a lot more of that red take over the map because people are getting back out on the roadways. You can see 10 at Cincinnati, both those upper and lower levels just getting a little bit busier here. But again, the big problem has been out towards I-10 East. Let's get a quick look at a different shot there from uh, 10 at West Avenue. So our friends at Trans got again scoping that area out for us where they do have traffic getting by at just one lane. We'll watch it closely and hopefully before the show wraps up, we'll have a better update to report here, guys. Thank you, Stephen. New this morning, the search is on for a robbery suspect. So here's a look at who police are looking for. Now we're told that earlier this month, the suspect went into the House of Liquor store on Culebra Road and reportedly tried to take off with several bottles of liquor without paying. Now, after pointing a gun at an employee, that suspect took off. Now you're asked to call Crime Stoppers. If you have any information about this case, that number is on your screen. It's 210-224-STOP. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> New this morning, as the war in Ukraine continues, Ukrainian Americans from our area are traveling to Washington, D.C. to ask elected leaders for help. The Texas Ukrainian delegation met with several Texas legislators to discuss the ongoing war. They asked for them to throw support behind Ukraine and do more to help. It comes just days after the Interna International Criminal Court issued an arrest warrant for Russian President Vladimir Putin for alleged schemes to deport Ukrainian children to Russia. Okolenka Bravo, a Ukrainian-American living here in San Antonio, says this was an important decision. We're asking to international tri tribunal to come up and stand with us because what was done to Ukrainian children, women, men, this is something that we need to be concerned. It's uh, in our time. How is it possible? Putin would have to be handed over by Russia or arrested outside of Russia for the ICC charges to result in an actual trial. The Texas Ukrainian delegation is going back to D.C. in April to meet with more elected leaders to garner support. San Antonio is Military City USA and soon it could be looked at as Cyber Security City USA. We've seen upgrades in cybersecurity career paths and education systems across the Alamo City. Max Kilger, director of the Data Analytics Program at UTSA, joined Leading SA to talk about cyber risk and the future of the industry in San Antonio. Yes, Professor Kilger joined us live. We talked about a lot. We started off with TikTok. We talked about the risks that it has not only for government employees' phones, but also phones across the United States. Then, of course, we talked about UTSA. We talked about the new Data Science Center downtown, what it means not only for the city, but what it means for students and their future careers. Here's a bit of our conversation. And they've taken some of the world-class uh, scholars from UTSA and ensconced them in that building. Uh, fabulous teaching facilities for students, uh, emphasizing cybersecurity, uh, data science, data analytics, in all sorts of different disciplines. And also, it's the new home of the uh, UTSA's National Security Collaboration Center, which where academia, industry, and government 
uh, come together to help protect our national security. It's a really amazing place, and they're working really hard to integrate San Pedro One into the San Antonio community. So it's really fabulous to see that happen. We also talked about cybersecurity in general, what it means for you and what it means for the future of our society. You can check out the full conversation right now. Just head to the Leading Essay section of KSAT.com. And of course, we have Leading Essay every Sunday morning at 8 a.m. So guys, we'll see you next Sunday. Back to you. Thanks, Max. Other stories we're following this morning. A last minute witness is scheduled to testify today before a grand jury investigating former President Trump. As ABC's Andrew Dimbert reports, this comes after Trump's claim this weekend that his arrest is imminent. This morning, House Speaker Kevin McCarthy is urging calm, saying people should not protest if former President Trump is indicted. I don't think people should protest this, no. Trump has claimed he will be arrested tomorrow in the Manhattan District Attorney's investigation into alleged hush money paid to adult film actress Stormy Daniels before the 2016 election. Prosecutors are looking into whether Trump falsified business records, typically a misdemeanor in New York. But legal experts say D.A. Alvin Bragg could bump the charge up to a felony if campaign finance laws were broken. Lawyer after lawyer after lawyer will tell you this is the weakest case out there. And doing it after a person for political purposes. Trump attended a wrestling match in Oklahoma over the weekend after calling on his supporters to protest what he claimed is his imminent arrest. Sources say today the grand jury will hear from an additional witness, Bob Costello. He's an attorney and longtime Trump ally who, at one point, represented Trump's former fixer, Michael Cohen. This additional witness may or may not be the last one, so it's really impossible to know what this means for the timing of any possible indictment. The White House, though, did say it is on alert for any potential violence. Bragg is not saying whether he'll charge Trump, but he emailed his staff this weekend saying, we do not tolerate attempts to intimidate our office. No one is above the law, not even the former president of the United States. This is likely a, some sort of misdemeanor on an issue seven years ago. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. Time now, 639 and 46 degrees for now. Spring will be officially here later this afternoon and the San Antonio Zoo has a new butterfly house. Our Sarah Costa will walk us through the greenhouse next. Outbound I-10 is an absolute parking lot right now. We'll have more on that in just a moment. But first, the San Antonio Zoo has a new butterfly house just in time for spring. Our Sarah Costa gives us a look into what you can see when you visit and why butterflies are so important for our plants and flowers. The new greenhouse also features two new baby sloths. Take a look. Hi, I'm Sarah Costa. We are at the San Antonio Zoo today and we are checking out their new exhibit, the Butterfly Rainforest. Let's go on inside. So we're in the butterfly exhibit. It's so amazing. It feels magical in here. And I'm joined with Ruby Hymas. She is our butterfly queen expert. I mean, look, there's butterflies all around us, Ruby. I love this exhibit so much. So how many butterflies do we have in here? And what are we looking at? What kind of species are there? So we have a variety of over 500 butterflies currently inside the butterfly house. Just so you guys are aware, it's 43 exotic species, just like this one that flew by us. It's called the leopard lacewing. And we also have three native Texas butterflies in here as well. Right behind me, I actually have the Atlas moth, which is the world's largest moth. And you can see right over here by the glass. And he's the only moth we have on exhibit right now. He is so big. And then what are these two other beautiful butterflies? There's a blue one and a white with orange right there behind him. Yeah, so we have, of course, our great yellow Mormon, which is our older butterfly. You can kind of see a little bit of wing wear. And then the large blue one, it's our guest favorite. It's going to be the common blue morpho native to Costa Rica. Why is it so important, Ruby, to have not just this interactive exhibit, but to promote the education of butterflies to your, um, the visitors here at the zoo? So one of the biggest things that we tell people is to, of course, care about any type of invertebrates from the smallest caterpillar to the largest butterfly or even any other smaller insect. Reason why they play a huge role in our ecosystem. We want to make sure that they're pollinating, giving us the fruit and veggies that we need to grow strong, of course, but also to help out the ecosystem and help out any animal other than that. So it's going to be helping out our largest um, rainforest animals like sloths. It's going to go out and help out jaguars. It can help out even the local ones here in Texas, like birds, lizards, like the Texas horn lizard. It's just amazing the amount of things that butterflies can do all on their own. They really play such an important role in our ecosystems across the world. I love that you also have, talk about the chrysalis. People can watch um, the whole cycle. You just had a butterfly land on you. <laughs> yes, of course. So the biggest thing that we love about this new building with John and Grelly Les Butterfly um, Rainforest, we can actually 
view our chrysalis up close and personal, which a lot of people weren't able to do that with our previous butterfly house. And they can actually view it right over here in this window. As they're emerging, they can see the whole process from the moment they come out of the chrysalis, stretching out their wings and getting ready to fly to be put in the display area specifically. Okay, and before you go, it's not just butterflies we have in here. We have a special guest, a, a, a baby boy sloth who has not been named yet. And, and the sloth is just kind of enjoy he has honestly the best home <laughs> yes he is and it's actually like really cool that you mentioned that because we are the only butterfly house in north america that houses a sloth inside its greenhouse which is beyond words we have two little ones that are still nameless we're actually doing a whole promotion on that right now on our website and it's going to be a boy as well as a girl we also have yavari our ambassador animal who will be retiring and moving into this house permanently later on as well well thank you so much ruby for any more information just head to our website ksat.com back to you guys Big traffic troubles on the northwest side. Yes, let's check back with Stephen Cavazos about that mess yes. on I-10. A quick update here. You may have received a push alert about this crash. Uh, just a quick update. It says I-10 westbound. This is actually in the eastbound lanes, as we've been reporting. So just a heads up there. If you are traveling into the downtown area, you're going to encounter this nightmare. This is not exactly how anyone wanted to start their first week back at work or taking the kiddos to school. Now, remember, I-10 eastbound is going to be a big problem spot. I've been getting updates from Justin Horn, who's stuck in this traffic as well. Katrina Weber also who has driven through the area with our photographer Asian Bermia has told us that this crash does appear to involve two vehicles. So we will work to get some information for you guys throughout the morning. But right now the best update we can advise you is start planning accordingly because this will cause you some big trouble out there. Big delays along I-10 eastbound at Hildebrand Avenue where that crash has been reported. You could see that buildup of red that stretched back now almost further than two miles to 10 at Crossroads. So if you are traveling into the downtown area. Here's a quick solution. If you have time, if you're heading down I-10 eastbound, get on to Loop 410 eastbound there at Crossroads. You could take 281 southbound to the downtown area and you will be able to avoid that mess. But keep in mind, 281 southbound is another heavily traveled area where we tend to see a lot more travelers. So let's get one last look at this wide metropolitan area. We're going to start to see more of those backups take place because it's back to work, back to school. Mm. And right here, we got to get back to this mess at 10 Advanced Jackson. Um, again, looks like a parking lot out there, but but yeah, uh, Katrina Weber did mention to us uh, that it does look like it involves two vehicles. So uh, right now, just use some caution and again, plan your commute accordingly. Outbound, inbound, doesn't matter. Yeah. What a mess yeah. with that one is Disaster. certainly headed into the town. Oh, no. All right, thank you, Stephen. Bet. Well, hopefully people can work their way around that. Yeah, staring at that picture, I mean, you can barely even see. The yeah. Yes. Yeah. Like just <laughs> Justin uh, is stuck in that as well. Justin Horney told mm. me that he's barely moving. Oh, and I can't oh. think of a good detour unless you got off and went over on Fredericksburg right. and came right. down Fred. Yeah, that may be a better another can. route if you mm -hmm. can, if you yeah. have that time. Yeah. Because right inside the app before you ever hit uh, 410 over there. So yeah. the other option right. is to get off and go uh, east towards San Pedro. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes. We'll look through those routes yeah. for you guys. Okay, great. All right. If you are heading out the door this morning, uh, first of all, I love this picture. I just it, that is absolutely it's gorgeous beautiful. out there. Look at all those pr beautiful colors, the blankets of purple and red and orange and yellows. Oh, that's so nice looking. I wish my yard looked like that. Thank you very much for the KSAC Connect shot. And uh, uh, we've got a lot of clouds hanging around here this morning, and we're going to keep plenty of clouds throughout the rest of today. We saw some sunshine yesterday. Not going to be the situation today. And as far as rain, we do have a couple of showers out there to the west. A lot of this is evaporating before it ever reaches the ground, but there are a couple little spots right here. This one area moving into the northwest corner of Medina County, that's reaching the ground. Slightly heavier rain. Elsewhere, again, it is just the very light stuff, but this will continue to work its way to the east, and so, yeah, we may see a couple little sprinkles around here. That's just going to make the roads damp. That's just going to make them slippery, so now, even though we did have some rain over the weekend, hopefully wash some of the dust and oil off. Just obviously take it easy. 47 here in town, same thing. Stinson, Converse, 46 Gonzalez, and 40 right now at Lost Maples. Fairly consistent temperatures thanks to the cloud cover out there. We may, we've already been down to 45 degrees. We've gone up a couple of notches here. May fluctuate a degree or two this morning, but not that much with the cloud cover out there. And temperatures will stay upper 40s, and then we have that 10% chance for yeah, a light little sprinkle here or there. Clouds throughout the day, low 50s at noon, and then we make it up to 57 later on this afternoon. And once we hit 57, temperatures really aren't going much of anywhere. We're not going to drop down 
that much, if at all, in the overnight hours because we're going to see the humidity continue to pump back on in here. Computer model, a couple of sprinkles throughout the course of the, the morning as well as the afternoon. One or two of them out there, not a big deal. Same thing then in the early morning hours tomorrow and throughout the day, a couple little sprinkles. The humidity continues to increase, so that'll kind of help out with some of those morning sprinkles. Same thing we go into Wednesday as well. Now, as far as the humidity, it's low right now. It's definitely going to be coming back in here. So throughout the course of today and then especially overnight and tomorrow, we're going to get these dew points well above 60. So that means you're going to feel the humidity, and that's going to be the case in through Thursday. Then the big drop down Thursday into Friday with the next front that moves on through here. It is not going to be a cold front, so we're as cold as we're, we're going to be getting right now throughout the rest of the week. But that front that comes through is going to be on the drier side, so that's going to get rid of the humidity, which will allow low temperatures to be close to normal. High temperatures, though, will be on the warm side. 52 at noon today. Cloudy skies. A sprinkle or two around here this morning. Kind of breezy this afternoon. Wind out of the southeast, 10, 20 miles per hour. That just continues to pump in all the humidity. So we were at 57 and then only dropped down to 55, if at all, tomorrow morning. Then we will get up to 67, 76 on Wednesday. A little sprinkle here and there. And the chance for showers, a couple of thunderstorms Thursday as the front moves through. Nice looking weekend in store. That is a good weekend after, mm -hmm. you know, the iffy weather. Right. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. Thank you, Mike. Uh, 651, 46 degrees. And let's look out there with live cam. Like Mike said, a cold start to your day, 46 degrees. But things will warm up a little bit, especially by the weekend. But we'll be back after this. Time check is 655. Let's get another look at the mess here along I-10 eastbound at Vance Jackson. Remember that push alert uh, that was just sent out a little while ago? Uh, it did say westbound lanes, but this crash is reported in the eastbound lanes. Our Katrina Weber, who's had her eye in the area, has mentioned that it does appear this crash involves two vehicles. Hopefully everyone's doing okay out there, but it does not look like drivers are doing okay. It is just back to back, and it really looks like a still shot in the eastbound lanes. Let's give you a quick solution here. I-10 eastbound, if you're traveling there near Hildebrand, you're going to to see some delays. So a quick solution there, even though traffic's backed up two miles, what you could do is take I-10 eastbound to loop 410 eastbound and exit San Pedro Avenue. I believe Mark had mentioned this a little bit earlier. Continue along San Pedro Avenue and you'll hit the downtown area that way, but it's going to be a mess for a while, Mike. Ugh. Not good news. All right, here's a look outside and we just have cloudy skies. No rain here in town, but we do have a couple of showers out there in the hill country and we'll see one or two of them. A lot of those may be evaporating before they reach the ground, but just a sprinkle or two here and there. Mid 40s on average around the area. It's not going to warm up that much. Mid upper 50s, plenty of clouds around, kind of breezy, and then it will get warmer throughout the rest of the week. More uh, like spring. More like mm -hmm. spring. And hats off to our boss, executive producer Joy Presley, for putting yes. the entire yes. newscast yes. together. Yes. And again tomorrow as well. Oh, she is goodness. a glutton and for she's punishment. And she's going to go out and buy us breakfast, too. No. Oh, she is? Wow. <laughs> you guys Thanks, have a great Joy. day. <laughs>